you done any house hunting in the last uh, couple of years? Going in and out of houses, wandering around, seeing what's out there. Sometimes just going to the, uh, well, it's probably not really been going on that much in the last couple of years because of COVID. But back in the day when they did those parade of home type things where you could go visit a bunch of houses that were uh, on display from local builders. I like to do that. Even if I'm not looking for a house, it's just so always interesting to, to walk around another property. But new houses, those weren't the ones that really excited me. It was the older houses, the ones that had some character, the ones that had some live in. But maybe we're trying to get some new life to them. Those were the fun ones. Made you always wonder, what's the history of this house? Why do I kind of feel this way in this house over here and maybe not this one over there? And sometimes it was just a really weird energy that you can never quite put your finger on. That's the interesting thing when it comes to houses. You really don't know the history unless you know the history one-on-one with those who lived there. Sometimes it's just the energy that keeps you guessing. Well, in today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online, EPP bonus episode number 413, by the way, we're going to hear about uh, two kind of types of houses. One, a workplace, where a lot of people kind of go and escape to uh, outside of their home, but it's like a home away from home. It's called Starbucks. You don't normally think of a Starbucks as a creepy or haunted place until you hear this story. And I'm sure it's probably not many Starbucks, but uh, there might be something going on at this one. And then what do you do when the spirit that haunts your childhood home and you're a child shows up in the middle of the night and you think it's your mom? It gets close enough and you can see it is your mom. And then it slowly transforms into something much darker, something horrifying, something you'll never get out of your dreams or your mind. Something evil. We got those two stories for you today. It's a great EPP bonus episode. Really a good one. EPP number 413 of Real Ghost Stories Online. My name's Tony Bruschi. Stay with us. you think of haunted places uh, you know sometimes you'll think of big old haunted houses that are rustic and ornate and have been sitting there for years maybe kind of decrepit maybe a old old restaurant that uh, has seen many a many a days and you can still feel the energy of all the people that came and went through that place uh, or uh maybe uh, possibly a starbucks <laughs> a haunted starbucks That's exactly what we hear about in our next story. And I got to say, this is a little freakier than a lot of uh, haunted houses with what goes down in this place. Take a listen. I've always believed in the paranormal in some way, shape or form, even though I am not sensitive. I had never witnessed anything, but my mother sure has. She told me about a few stories from her childhood. I'm grateful not to be gifted in that way. This group of experiences has been the only time I've witnessed something paranormal firsthand, but I still think about it to this day. This was back in 2014. I was a supervisor at a Starbucks location for around five years or so. I primarily worked afternoons and evenings since I was a college student. I typically worked the closing shift 2 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. and was never at the store much later than that. Our opening crew, on the other hand, arrives to the store at about 3.30 a.m. to be open by 4. I'd worked in the morning a few times when I had switched shifts to help out a friend. Morning crew used to say there was a ghost named Fred that would knock things over while they were setting up early in the morning. 
I had not witnessed any sort of activity during my five years there, so I was skeptical of it being true. We thought it was just a joke for them being clumsy early in the morning. A way to poke fun at themselves for maybe dropping things. Around that time, there was a major change in the store when our manager and a few of us ended up being transferred to another location. This was very abnormal because our store had the same manager and employees for a few years with little turnover. Our regular customers were considerably upset and longtime co-workers were splitting up. I was the barista favorite because one of the few supervisors that was chill but always got everything done and more. They all wanted to be scheduled with me. I was like the mama of the store, even though we were only a few years apart. A few that had to stay were incredibly sad that I was leaving. The air was filled with despair and anxiety. My last two weeks working there, I ended up having to work the opening shift to prepare for my transfer. By then, a few people had already moved over there, including our manager. We'd almost all new faces join in a new manager. Many changes took place very quickly over a two-week period. The first morning I opened arrived at 3.25 a.m. with one other person to help set up. When we prepared the store, we did not turn the store lights on, so people driving past did not think that we're open. It's putting the cash drawers in the registers and the wall that went behind when something metal fell and made a very loud noise. I jumped, turned around to see what it was. It was so dark I had to bend down to see what it could possibly be. It was one of three metal coffee nameplates had fallen off the top of our coffee brewer. These plates are not significantly heavy, but you still wouldn't want it to fall on your toes. They're about the size of a birthday card made of metal and are molded to lean back and display what coffee we have brewing, specifically made not to fall over. My new co-worker, Cecilia, turned around to the corner to my left to see what had fallen and asked me what happened. I looked at her and said, huh, that's weird, as I stood back upholding it. This plate fell, but I don't really see how. I examined it. There was no glaring imperfections that would make it not sit evenly or cause it to evenly tip e or easily tip over. It was too heavy for the AC to knock over. I put it back and got on with my work. The same occurrence happened two other times, a couple mornings apart. I investigated the brewer where they sit to see if they would vibrate off something. I switched the order of them so the one that kept falling was in the center a few mornings, I kept a very close eye on it. To no avail, it did not happen. It had been a few mornings since the plate had fallen, so it was far from my mind. When I came to open the second to last day I was working there, I just pulled the tills and the safe and were carrying them to the back to count and prep for the day. I'd taken about five steps into the back room when something came flying horizontally at chest level about six to seven feet in front of me. It came quickly from my left, hit the garbage bin on the complete opposite side of the room, then landed smack dab center in the middle of the floor with a loud metallic reverberating clang. It was so startling and loud, I dropped all of the tills, chain scattered all over the tile floor, making me jump a second time. My new coworker came running to the back shouting, oh my God, is he okay? Did you slip? And she stopped when she saw me standing there, frozen, hands over my mouth, eyes looked straight in front of me. She put her hand on me and asked, are you okay? What happened? I took a breath and responded hesitantly, yes, I'm fine. I, I, I just had the shit scared out of me. I stepped over the pile of crooked cash tills and loose change to see about six feet in front of me, sitting perfectly upright in center, a metal steaming pitcher. We use them to heat the milk on the espresso bar and do not store them in the back. I picked it up off the floor, looked to the left of the room where I had seen the fly it where I'd seen it fly from. The only thing there was a mop sink and the employee break area, which consisted of lockers and a small table and chair for breaks. Certain nothing that could propel something of this size and weight straight across the room with that force. I turned back to my coworker who was helping clean up the money. I set the steaming pitcher on the sink and looked back again where it had come from, very confused. I did not want to go into all this with a new coworker, 
So I told her I heard a noise and it made me jump. Later that day around noon, a good friend and fellow shift supervisor, June, came to take over for me since I was pretty much done for the day. She always came in a few minutes early, so I pulled her off to the side and told her about the steaming pitcher. I showed her where and explained what happened, asking her, how can something like that be thrown with that much force, clear across a 12-foot space, and then bounce back to sitting perfectly upright and center in the middle of a room? After a few questions, June looked at me and said, well, sounds like it was Fred. I laughed and said, ha, okay, June, sure. She looks at me and states, no, I'm, I'm not joking. I know we talk about Fred very casually and jokingly, but he is real and he does things like this. I stared at her for a minute, not wanting to believe her. Then how come I've not seen or experienced anything before? I've worked here longer than you in five years, nothing. And all of a sudden there are steaming pitchers flying across the room. It doesn't make much sense. June leaned against the wall next to her. That's because there hasn't been good enough reason. I have a theory. Right when I started working here, about a year after you, our first manager left, remember? He worked afternoons while I worked the opening shift. I started to notice the day after he left, things would fall over that shouldn't. Like the metal coffee plates falling straight to the floor. Like something knocked them off. My stomach dropped. I hadn't ever told her about that yet. She continued, it was only once or twice I noticed something moved or thrown, but they confused me nonetheless. Right now, there's a lot of change taking place. Manager has already been replaced. A bunch of longtime employees are moving. I have a feeling that Fred does not like change. What she was saying made sense. I just looked at her and said something like, well, I hope this is the last I hear from him because this morning was not cool. The next day, my last day, I worked a closing shift with my two favorite baristas. I was relieved to be working my old shift. I felt safe and happy to be working with my best friends. We were a drive through store, so we all wore those headsets that can talk to the speaker outside and take orders. Just a general rule, if there was enough for all, we would all wear one just in case someone needed help or got busy. But mostly, we used to talk to each other all day and talk shit about customers. It was the afternoon, not too busy, pretty quiet. I was brewing coffee when I turned to see my coworker, Amy, leaning over the counter, looking into the lobby. She looked over at me and through the headset quietly asked, Hey, Mama Jeff, my very unfortunate dub nickname that everyone used, even customers. Is there someone in that corner? Well, pointing towards the lobby. I shrugged and began walking around the back counter to the lobby. This corner was impossible to see from behind the counter, poor store design. Teenagers would hang out there and try to make out without getting caught. I made my way across the lobby and no one was there. All there was were the two worn, dark red leather armchairs and a small table strewn with newspaper. I pushed the button down on the headset and said, nope, no one's there. Amy, did you think there was? She looked at me for a minute and said, well, no, I don't know. I thought I kept hearing whispering coming from that corner at least three or four times, but when I would lean over the counter and try to hear closer, it would stop. Amy was a good friend and a longtime co-worker. I trusted her. I did not tell her anything about the last few exciting mornings. Being logical, I ensured her it was probably just the music from the sound system. Starbucks plays some weird crap. We both stopped and listened for a minute. The only sounds were the hum of the fridges, coffee maker brewing, and the quiet roar of the AC above the building, no music. I walked to the back to see why there was no music and found a control box unplugged. That's we're going to pause it. The preview portion of this week's EPP bonus episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you want to hear the rest of this really amazing story, uh, you got to check out Become an EPP. It's an extra podcast person that's a supporter of the show. We put out like six episodes a week or so completely. You know, it's free. There's nothing there. But we give you the extra episode uh, if you're a supporter. Um, and we put a bunch of really good stories in there too. And you get other extras as well. So become one at one of two places. You can go to ghostpodcast.com and sign up through the website there. Uh, or Patreon, uh, the Patreon app, or go to patreon.com slash real ghost stories uh, and sign up right there. The link is also at ghostpodcast.com 
So you can choose however you'd like to sign up and uh, help keep the show on the air. And you get all of these ghost stories, all the bonus episodes, all the advanced episodes, all the archive and no ads too. That's kind of cool. You can just binge and binge and binge away. Do check that out. Another part of our story here today, that uh, story of the childhood home and the evil that lies within it that takes the shape of of a mother. Just, yeah, that, that's just the stuff horror movies are made of. Check it out, ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. One, two, three, four!